Welcome back to SciTi Tech. As you can see, this is a 1990 CRT computer monitor. This is what they used to use for computer monitors in the 1990s. And me being born in 1986, I'm fully familiar with these computer monitors. I completely grew up with these in school and at home. And these things are heavy and unimaginable that they existed back then. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear it down. Let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and just unscrew all the screws I can find. It's a very easy process to do. So this is what the inside looks like. And as you can see right here, this suction cup is the flyback transformer. And there's the flyback transformer. Those things are really cool. Those produce high voltage and they're really cool. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with those. And look at all the wires and relays and capacitors and all the little components that are inside. Lots of interesting things to salvage. A little transformer and a transistor. Bunch of wires. Bunch of little interesting and useful components that I can use. And of course the flyback transformer. Hmm. This is very, very interesting. Well, let's go now a little deeper. So what I have right here is my chicken stick connected to ground in the wall socket. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this suction cup off from the uh, right here that's connected to the flyback transformer. And I'm gonna go ahead and discharge it. There we go, now it's discharged. Now let's go a little deeper and let's take this whole thing completely apart. Okay, so now I'm taking it all apart and I'm separating the circuit board so that way I can be able to get to all the components and start desoldering. There we go. All right, there is all the components that are on the circuit board. So let's go ahead and desolder the flyback transformer. All right, and now there we go. I finally pulled out the flyback transformer. Ah, this thing is beautiful. Very dusty and dirty. I'm gonna to need to use isopropyl alcohol to remove all that dust. All right, so I'll go ahead and put in my component pile. Now I have the circuit board that has all the components. I'm gonna go and desolder that metal panel that's attached to it. And get rid of, and take out those MOSFETs that's attached to it as well. Right now, I'm just focusing on desoldering the big pieces that are on there and major components that I want. Like, for example, this aluminium plate that I'm desoldering to be able to pull out that MOSFET that's inside. That MOSFET is a high voltage MOSFET and it can be very, very useful for doing all kinds of interesting things. So I'm focusing right now only on the major components. There we go, it's actually a 555 timer. How cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and do an instant desoldering. Here's my circuit board and I'm gonna do presto, there. Now all the components are desoldered off from the circuit board. Now I'm gonna go and just push it all into a pile. And as you can see, I've pretty much got all the components I want off from the circuit board. There's not much, I just pull off everything that I thought was most important. There is a few diodes, 
there are a few Xeno diodes, a few capacitors, and a few uh, resistors. Don't really need those. I'm just gonna leave them on the board and then desolder them if I need them. An iron toroid ring, which is good. Some high voltage wire and more wires. Wires are always good to keep, so I'm gonna keep those on the side. And this here is pure aluminium. I could probably use them as heat, heat sinks or just melt them into art or ingots or whatever I want to with it. It's very easy to melt. And I have right here some more wire. I can just use that for wire. These are a little bit, these are magnet wire. That can be useful because they're insulated and I can use it for something. Another heat sink. Might keep that one because that looks like a good heat sink. And some components I didn't bother removing off from those circuit boards. And this pile here is all trash, completely useless. Here I have this thick copper wire. I can definitely use this for something or keep it because it's copper. But I might use it for running high voltage through the wire or something like that for the future project. Not really sure, but I'll come up with something. And here are all the components that I have salvaged. I have right here some electrolytic capacitors ranging between 0.001 microfarads to 5,000 microfarads. I have these ceramic capacitors and high voltage ceramic capacitors. And all those can be very useful for future projects or anything else. They can be extremely useful for anything you want. It's very good to have. Now right here are some inductors. And I have some toroid rings. Those are also very useful. And I have right here some high voltage resistors made of cement, which means they can handle high heat. So they can be very useful for high voltage. And I, and I have right here some mini potentiometers. And I have right here some high voltage diodes, a full bridge rectifier circuit, and I have some transformers. And I have right here some MOSFETs, high voltage MOSFETs. These type of transistors are very useful to use for anything and they can handle high voltage, which is really good. And then I have some basic transistors and then some regular type of MOSFETs. Then I have a fuse, different types of fuses and relays. And those I think are digital relays. This particular device here, I actually have no idea what that is. If you can leave a comment, if any of you can leave a comment down below telling me what this is, I would really like to know. I think it's a switch or a fuse or something. I have no idea what that is. And then these here are the old classic relays. This one right here, you can actually hear it click, which means it has a little uh, magnet and a... This means this has an actual magnet and a coil and tapping on it, you can actually hear like a little spring moving inside. So that's one of those old type of diodes, those old type of relays. But relays, of course, are always very useful. And then I have right here a relay that's a digital relay or a solid state relay. Tapping on that you can't hear anything because it, I don't think it has any moving parts 
or it maybe does, or, and it's just completely different compared to the other relay. And what I have right here is a full bridge rectifier. This is a full bridge rectifier where you don't require putting four diodes to make a full bridge rectifier. That's all made into like an integrated circuit. Very useful. And then I have right here some integrated circuits. Some of these I'm not sure what they are, but this right here is a 555 timer. And I like 555 timers. They can be very useful for a lot of interesting things. Which I'm actually pretty happy that I've actually am lucky to find that inside of one of these old computer monitors. And then, of course, I have my flyback transformer. Flyback transformers put off high voltage, and I really like these. These are really cool, and I can do a lot of interesting things with these. So, yeah, this is really cool. And I find these inductors very interesting because these inductors, instead of just having a basic iron core, they're actually magnetic, which I find very interesting. Now I believe, if I'm correct, inductors that has a iron core that is magnetic tends to put off a completely different magnetic field compared to regular inductors with just an iron core. But yeah, I find this very interesting. Might be useful for future projects, not really sure, but we'll see. And there you have it. These are all of the components that I have salvaged from a CRT PC monitor. Thank you for watching SciTai Tech. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more SciTai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.